What's up guys, Steve with Steve Invest. We're gonna be talking with Bucky Beeman. He's a young real estate agent, up and coming over in Minnesota. We're gonna talk details on uh, real estate investing, financial freedom, and much more, so stay tuned. All right, welcome to the Bucky Beeman Audio Adventure. It's been a while since I've had an episode and we are getting right into it. I'm trying to think back how I even met Steve. I met Steve through a YouTube comment. That's where I first met Steve, so I'm excited to learn more about your business and more about uh, where we connect in multiple ways. Nah, I appreciate you having me, man. Steve, where are you from? Uh, originally New Jersey and then uh, moved to Florida when, when I graduated high school. I had to get out of the cold weather. I know you're in, uh, probably in the cold weather right now in Minnesota, right? Yeah, I'm used to it by now. I even have a plow truck. Um, I got it right out of high school. <laughs> Put way too much money into this truck. Um, but when it never fails, like when snow removal season comes around, I'm just like jacked up for about the first two or three times shoveling snow and plowing snow. And then about the fifth time, I'm like, what the heck do I, why do I still own this plow truck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't miss that at all. <laughs> um, how long have you been in the real estate business i got into it when i was in college um in 2002 and then um my sister was over on the east coast of florida in fort lauderdale and i you know i got busy pretty quickly and um wound up bringing her over and in 2006 i got my broker's license and uh, we started up our company maxim maxim realtors yeah that is sweet and did you start off right away with your real estate license or did you dabble in investment or where did it uh, really take you? Um, you know, my, my goal is to buy a house early on and that's, that was my main motivation. I was, I was actually working with another agent that was showing property because um, originally my father ended up picking up a house and I wound up renting all the rooms out and this was a way for me to basically live free in college. And uh, worked out really well. And then I was like, all right, I want to buy my own. But that last agent was terrible. And I was, I was like, I know I can do a better job searching for myself. So let me just get my license. And then that's, you know, that's kind of how it all started. What did you rent out each bedroom for? Do you remember back, back when? Uh, three, I had the master and then I had three bed, three others. It was four bedrooms, um, 350 a month. And they had to share responsibility for cutting the lawn. <laughs> uh, my first one I did that the same thing I think they call it house hacking but I I did the same exact thing and uh, I went as scientific to break down the utility bills I'm like I am not gonna lose any money on this deal so they were paying a portion of their gas a portion of their electric um, everything. That's, that's awesome and and honestly I think we we should have a, a whole separate call or collaboration on this as well because I think uh, especially a lot of younger people they're you know we're not taught uh, financial intelligence or, or really anything in school and many times even from our own family members um, I, it's just I think one of, that's one of the things that uh, you know I'm bringing to the channel too is more of a financial component just being smart keep your overhead as low as possible and you, you know at the end of the day you don't have to make a lot of money to be wealthy I mean as long as you're smart with money and you invest it correctly I mean the, the sky's the limit I think the beautiful th two thing about real estate is it can create this monthly residual income and that monthly residual can cover so much your overhead and then some if you do it right and even yep. if it's covering your overhead right i mean it's like then you have this financial freedom to uh figure out what's over and above your general living overhead uh and the sky's the limit i'm with you man i bucky i can tell you you know I see so many real estate agents get into the business and their cost of living is so high and they're, they're stressed out to make that next transaction because they need that money in order to pay bills. And that's just, it, it's not a, it's not a good way of um, working in any kind of business because you might not be as rational in your decision-making. You might try to force a sale and everything else when you're, when you become financially free and you know, money is not, the, the core thing that you're working for, um, everything becomes a hell of a lot easier. So, and you're, you're a young dude. How, I mean, when did you buy a house? Uh, I was 18, 19, right in that era. And, uh, it was 
two things happened. One, I had a friend that was older than myself and he was already into business. So he was pushing me. Second thing happened is I got introduced to what a contract for deed is. And nice. uh, in Rochester, Minnesota, gave me the opportunity to buy a house that she was tired of managing. She was tired of just dealing with. And uh, I got into it with relatively low money down. I think it was like $5,000. And uh, I don't even, you know, how I look back and like how some people are like, ah, my first house, like all that stuff. I just didn't even think about any of that. I was just like, okay, I got a monthly mortgage payment. I got to find how the hell to pay this monthly mortgage payment. And if I do that, I feel good. I don't even think I told my parents about it until one day they're like, so where are you living now? You're not living with your friend anymore. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. I got into this house somehow. <laughs> that, that's awesome. I, I got a lot of respect for you on that. I mean, I, I, that's, that's so important. And the more we can get that message out, I think it's, you know, if, if we can help one person on this call, um, then, then we've done our job. The contract for deed is a sweet tool. I've got into multiple properties that way. And it started with the one, but I bet I got into five, six properties that way. And even properties that were listed on the MLS that were sitting for a long time. And then I reached out to the other agent and said, would they consider a contract for deed? And sometimes you got to explain to the seller what that means, but it's been a great tool to get into multiple properties at a young age. That's awesome. And virtually a little money down, right? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So you get that cash flow coming in from your real job. Uh, hopefully you're stashing some to the side, which I was fortunate to do. So, yeah. So your real estate journey, kind of take us through your real estate journey, the ups and the downs. 2002 was prior to the recession, right? Yeah. Yep. So you, did you feel the recession when, when you were in the business? It was, uh, let me, let me put it this way. It was almost like uh, taking orders. Um, we, we did luck out. We had a, uh, a builder at the time that we had, we worked on pretty hard to get exclusive rights to, to sell his product. So we put a, a team in there and I was in there as well as my sister. We had two model homes and we just, we sold those as well as we could sell general real estate as well. And um, you know, it was just like, we were making a ton of money. And of course I wasn't financially, I mean, I, you know, when you're in the beginning, I was financially responsible because I didn't have any money. And then you start making money. You're like, oh, OK, this is this is never going to stop. Right. And uh, yeah, it stopped pretty much immediately. And um, so when the market crashed, we we really um, I sold my condo. My you know, my overhead expenses at that time was like five thousand a month personal overhead. It, it was stupid. It was asinine. So. I literally liquidated everything. I had, you know, a boat, I had wave runners, I had, you know, luxury car, I had the condo on the water or the boat, boat dock and all that kind of stuff. And I knew that um, we needed to get lean and that's, that's when we did it. And, you know, we opened up in 2006 and it was probably not the best time to do that. So it was kind of like, we got to get our personal overhead super lean or we basically closed the doors of our brand new real estate office and I wasn't going to do that. So, um, market crashed and we adapted to the market. We, we concentrate heavily on, um, leasing a lot of properties because people were upside down. So we, uh, we, we leased, we represented in that period of time over a thousand landlords, uh, leasing their properties. And then, um, we went after bank assets. We had about 50, 60 listings with, with banks. And then my primary focus, which I've really enjoyed, was helping people avoid foreclosure doing short sales. And uh, we created a, a short sale course for this as well. And um, I think, you know, my honest opinion, we're, we're going to go into a recession in the next, you know, 16, 24 months. Um, and I think that real estate agents need to be prepared for this because I don't know how it is in your market right now, but for example, we just took a listing um, for 400 grand and if it sells at asking price and these people bought it a year and a half ago, not through us, but if it sells at asking price, they're still going to have to come to the table with about 25 grand and, um, and that's, you know, closing costs and so forth. But I don't, I don't even think it's going to sell for asking price. So I, I think they're, and I prepped them like, oh, you know, you, you guys gotta be prepared to come to the table at 50, 60, 70 grand mm. and they're in shock, but I, Bucky doesn't have control and I don't have control over the real estate market. <laughs> so yeah. we're, we're just trying to educate others on how they can at least prepare for it. And, you know, if you can 
you can help a if you can help one person avoid foreclosure and get on with their life quicker, they they just become big cheerleaders for you. And we, you know, this is why we have so much repeat business because we've we, you know, I think we did like three three hundred and fifty short sales when the market crashed. Wow! And you had yeah. just people in some of their roughest states, I would imagine, financially, right? I mean, they're for those that don't know what a short sale is, you're selling it prior to the foreclosure, right? Just before. Um. Yeah, I mean, in most cases, you're going to be in default, but basically you're selling it short of what's owed plus closing costs. And um, a lot of times the banks will waive their deficiency judgments. It's not as bad on credit. Um, and we have people that, you know, were able to buy a house, you know, a year and a half, two years later. So it, it helps you get on with your life a, a hell of a lot faster. And in terms of, you know, if that person finances anything in the future, whether it be a car or even a house, your your interest rates are going to be lower um, as opposed to a foreclosure on your record. So you're actually going to save tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands over the, your entire lifetime. Mm. Um, one thing that I caught while you're sharing about that story is you started a course. So I feel like, and maybe explain this, you're something we're both passionate about, I feel, is the internet. In the beginning, did you use the internet? At some point, did you... Uh, figure out what the internet was for power and uh, what has been your journey in using the internet in business? For what we're doing now, like educating wise? Yeah, like you said, you developed a course and I imagine that yeah. early course days, was there actually people developing courses, you know? There, at, no, not really. I mean, there's, they had local courses that you could go to, but for short sales, there was nothing, you know, we were learning as the banks were learning. The banks had no idea what they're doing, but yeah, I mean, um, you know, we, we sold majority share of our real estate company maximum in 2018. And I just realized that, you know, I keep giving the same advice over and over and over being super redundant. I needed to put it on, I needed to put it on film and make sure that it gets out there. So that's why we're doing the courses as well as the, the YouTube channel and so forth. And you're distributing it, uh, the courses online through a platform. Is that right? Yeah, I use uh, Kajabi. So the one paid course is the short sale one. We're going to have some other free ones as well. Um, so just to, you know, the one that I'm working on right now is you're basically a jumpstart program, your first 48 hours into real estate. Even if you're a veteran agent, this will kind of just put things in pers perspective, get your, get your ass in gear and and jumpstart your real estate career. So that's going to be a free one that we're going to put out here soon. That's sweet. What, what has your journey been like with the internet and business? Is it something that you just recognize now the power that it has? Yeah, I think I've been sleeping on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm, I've been pretty old school to be honest with you. You know, I've been old school with, um, uh, real estate prospecting and everything, knocking on doors, cold calling, you know, just face to face presentation. And, and I've, you know, we've developed a, a lot of uh, business that way, um, even recruiting agents for a real estate firm. So, but I now, I mean, and as you know, I just went to Vid Summit. It's, it, it's insane how much opportunity is out there for people. I, I'm shocked. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's just all industries, but internet. Uh, obviously can help the real estate business as well. It's just, I, I, I got introduced to the power of it. It was probably four years ago. Um, and I'm a big subscriber to Gary V. Um, and he's yep, me too. About Snapchat and how it was on the come up. And I just started creating content on Snapchat. And because I was creating content consistently, and I think I was even trying to find a way to put it on YouTube and other places, I was able to meet other real estate agents that use Snapchat during that same time. We're all figuring it out at the same time. And it led to a mastermind where we met up in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, and it led to building relationships and it led to a Facebook group. And I'm actually going to reunite with some of them this week uh, in Madison, Wisconsin. And it's just like, if I can build relationships with other real estate agents that are trying to figure out this internet thing, how the heck can I build relationships with clients using this same technology? And you're right. It's a door opener. No, that's awesome. And I, I saw you're on uh, TikTok too, right? I saw one of your videos. Yeah. And the only reason I'm on it, man, is because uh, Gary B again, he, yeah. he's I am uh, pushing it. He's been pushing it hard. So I remember him pushing musically probably two years ago and I started creating some content. Let's say I created 40 videos 
and I, I just felt awkward. So I, <laughs> cause it was all younger people. So I was like, I'm just going to delete these. So I deleted them. I wish I wouldn't have, but anyways, musically, um, th- musically then sold out to TikTok, and just in the last, Gosh, it's probably been four months. Gary has been just hammering. You need to be on TikTok. Uh, the time is now. So I've been having fun with it. I don't foresee, like, personally getting customers specifically from TikTok, but I do see the ability to create content that's amusing that I can distribute on Instagram or other platforms and yeah. then build rapport with, with people. No, I think that's a smart pull. I think everything you're doing is is smart. I mean, kind of like Gary Vee says, you got to get on the the necessary platforms and and work them. And nobody's going to work them besides the person that's behind it. And um, it takes that discipline and consistency. So I, I think you're doing all the right things. I mean, that's that, that's uh, so so beneficial. And like what you're saying, the mastermind groups and and developing those relationships. I I applaud you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Share a little bit about your YouTube. What are you doing on your YouTube? What do you like sharing on your YouTube? Um, it, it's a, you know, ever since we, we sold our company, I've definitely had a lot more free time. So I'm like, all right, what's the, and I, I love to give back. I love to share my knowledge, my experiences, my failures, everything. So it's basically just helping real estate agents and, um, you know, any kind of, uh, tips or tricks or any anything that I've been through I'm thinking of I'm like oh man it's gonna be that's something every time I'm in a meeting with some of our agents I come up with something new like one of the last ones I just did where his he was held back and and bent out of shape he was with another real estate firm for a year didn't do any transactions and one one sole thing was um, he thought he was too young and really not i don't even believe he even got those objections from people but it was just he was mind screwing himself and so you know if i can talk through that and if again if i can help one person out of with one video help one person out then i feel like i've done my job so i'm just just all about sharing the the content and just my life experience in real estate and again the financial component i think that there's so many struggling people out there that really need to um, understand finances a little bit better and you know, you, at the end of the day, and I heard Gary V say it a bunch of times is it's to me, um, I don't care about being a millionaire or any, anything like that. What I care about is happiness. And when I have free time to do whatever I want for me, that's, that's true happiness, free time to spend time with family, friends, sit on the beach, whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. do what you want with whom you want, when you want. (laughs) Yep. Exactly. And, and I can tell you, Bucky, there's, it's not that difficult. Uh, Almost everybody, you know, depending on their debt situation and and their scenarios, you know, almost anybody can get there in a fairly fast period of time. Even when the market crashed, you know, I was able to become financially free in literally a three and a half, four year period. Do you think that if the market would have not crashed, you would have not been able to reach that freedom as, as uh, organically? I don't know if that's the right word, but there's something to be said about going from the top to the bottom, yep. finding that perfect place in the middle. You know, what is that? What is that time like? Yeah, I mean, when you got, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a month coming in and commissions, you're kind of living it up and. Um, but yeah, if, if I didn't go through the crash, it humbles you. And if, if I didn't experience that again, before I even started, I was more fiscally responsible than going and being, you know, order taking and selling real estate. And then when it crashed, I got back to that mindset of, wow, what, what the hell was I doing? You, it's easy to get, get off track. And absolutely, I don't regret it for a minute. I'm glad I went through it. Um, you know, I, I, there's an old saying, you really don't learn much from your successes. Mm-hmm. And, and I agree. It's like, you gotta, I tell all of our agents, like, I, I want you to go out and fail, fail as much because schools teach you, Hey, you got an F or a D like you're a loser, you know, you're, you're doing bad, but you know, it's all ass backwards. You know, you got to go out, you got to fail. And, um, upon, you know, after the, within that failure, as long as you're taking it the right way, you learn and you grow from it. You know, when you, you know, when you hit these success points, 
it feels good for a minute and then you're like, okay, uh, now what? But what did you really learn? You know, like one thing you do learn is, hey, I can do it. I, I can get there. Um, and another thing with that is um, I recommend everybody work on reflection on a daily basis because you can, if you do reflect on your successes, that'll help as well because it's easy to forget about them. Mm -hmm. That's good. Love every moment of that. Um, let's talk a little bit about Vid Summit. I uh, see all these national conferences. I've been fortunate to go to Social Media Marketing World two years in a row. Um, I've done those masterminds with uh, what we call ourselves the Snap Pack. There's a Facebook group out there of re real estate agents from around the country. They're all exciting. They all have the hype, you know, online. They make you want to hit the buy the ticket, and then you try to figure out how the heck to get there. What would be your uh, review on Vid Summit? If I had to sum it up in one word, it was inspiring. Um, there's a small YouTuber. You probably heard of him. His name's Mr. Beast. Mm. <laughs> he's he's huge. If if nobody has heard of Mr. Beast, the dude is. It, he's huge. The guy that uh, founded Vid Summit, uh, Daryl uh, Eves, he um, actually sold a portion of Vid Summit to Mr. Beast. The guy's name is Jimmy. He was one of the keynote speakers. He's got millions and millions and millions of subscribers. The guy, they're they're marketing geniuses. But Daryl um, really was a coach for Mr. Beast as well. They're both big YouTubers. Um, what's cool about Vid Summit is they cap it at about fifteen hundred people. It's not a fan show style. Um, you, you know, when you're there, you're there to learn, you're sitting next to the guy next to you might have, you know, 2 million subs and the guy to your left is brand new, you know, so you, you just don't know who you're sitting next to, but there's a lot of, a lot of big YouTubers there. A lot of guys that I've been watching for a while, like, uh, Pat Flynn, uh, Sean and Benji with, um, uh, video influencers, uh, Brian G, Nick Nimmin, his brother. I mean, there, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of good speakers there and um it was all broken up so like at any given time there's probably four or five um sessions going on at once so you got to pick and choose you know the most popular and i bought the live stream or recorded version too so i can go back and watch other ones that i missed that is great and so what were some of your takeaways from the vid summit you know, when I decided to go the YouTube route, make this commitment, because, you know, it does take a strong commitment to consistency. Um, I went to the kind of the school of YouTube. So I watched as many videos as I possibly could about how to grow a YouTube channel. And one takeaway is I think I was basically 90, 85, 90% doing pretty much everything that they all recommended. Um, so I still have about you know, a, a good portion of stuff to work on, which I've been doing the last couple of days. Um, I couldn't say there's anything that big where I'm like, hey, this is the one thing, um, because I, at the end of the day, it's consistency. You, you gotta be consistent in anything you're doing to get a result, whether it's working out or, you know, prospecting or whatever. So that's that's forefront. But uh, learn some stuff about LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn, I know Gary Vee's been talking about this. So, um, I forget her name. It's uh, her last name is Chan. She's she's huge on LinkedIn, and she did a her her keynote. And uh, I guess from February of this year to present day, there's only fifteen hundred people on LinkedIn that are consistently and consistently meaning once a month putting video out there. Hmm. And I guess there's six hundred and thirty million people on LinkedIn. So fifteen hundred people. And the or organic reach is huge. So one takeaway for me is I'm, we're, you know, I'm actually going to meet with uh, uh, part of my staff, Rhonda, over here. And we're going to talk about a game plan moving forward to get um, the video content from YouTube, clip it up into you know, multiple clips and put it out there. Also, another thing, too, is um, on any platform, they don't, you know, LinkedIn doesn't want you to move off of that platform and go to YouTube you, and, and vice versa. So if you are putting content out there, you got to figure a way of leaving that content out there, out there and not linking. So if you do link a, um, from what I'm told, if you do link a, a YouTube video on your LinkedIn and it goes off, it's actually going to hurt you and your algorithm for or, organic reach. So if you just embed the videos right in there, 
um, and provide engaging uh, copyright, then you know you're you're going to grow that that base. And I, you know, without trying, I you know I have over six thousand people on there, so I know, and that's with not even really posting much. Um, so I know that uh, you know with a little bit of effort, maybe uh, at least once a week putting a video up on there, I, I know we can definitely make some headway. Yeah, that's sweet. What what would you say? You know, you go to those conferences. A friend of mine that I met at Social Media Marketing World was there. Parker Panel. He's become an actor. He's really followed his dreams. He's now in Los Angeles. I think he was originally from Kentucky. His parents are helping support him in all of his content creation. You look at a kid like that, and he's turned into a man very fast. And I have been fortunate to follow his journey online. And it's like, <laughs> you're just like, how am I not? creating as much content as somebody that is younger than myself, right? And so you look at the <laughs> age difference, right? And I, I think, what is, what is some of the struggles that you have? Because I can share about some of my struggles with content creation. Um, one specifically is, like you said, chopping it up. It's like building that team or dedicating the time yourself because you often are saying, no, I need to go work on, in my case, go selling this property. I'm not going to spend time chopping up this video. And I think that's part of the reason I haven't put out as much content is, you know, that excuse of not having the time. What are some of your struggles when you look at social media and video creation? Um, well, I think a lot of people use time, not having enough time as it's just the ultimate excuse. Um, yeah. and, and we can all play that game and, and we all do it, you know? Um, and I think that, that's all you have at the end of the day. So um, one thing was being able to free up time, but also, you know, I made the investment pretty quickly in, in our, our staff VP of marketing, Rhonda, to help me out. And, um, you know, she's part-time right now, but we have a goal coming into next year being full-time. And uh, for somebody to be able to help out on the different platforms, as well as uh, copyright creation and all that, it's, you know, assisting and leveraging, um, other people is huge. Um, but that, you know, you, you, you know, you might not be motivated one day to get on film. You might not have necessarily the best ideas going it, you know, everybody has bad days or they're tired or whatever, you know? So I think that sometimes I struggle with that where I'm just exhausted. I'm like, ah, it can wait another day. But when you start doing that, you go down that rabbit hole and you're screwed. But what, what about you? What's your hang up? Um, another hang up that I have, I would say is the copyright. I just don't consider myself a very good writer. I don't consider myself passionate about writing. And, uh, for that reason, <laughs> like I think back to my tweet about a month ago when someone just completely butchered me on my tweet, they're like, your there is wrong. Your, your is wrong. And something else is wrong. And I'm, and I'm like, yeah, you're right about every single one of those. Um, so I usually less is more for me when I go into my copywriting. So it's a big hang up. Um, especially if you talk about search and how that works on YouTube or certain channels, um, I'm probably losing my amount of reach because of my copyright abilities. I got you. And you know, if you have the ability to, to hire somebody, I mean, I, I'm a, like for prime example, our real estate agents, I asked them, you know, kind of what you're asking me right now, where their biggest hangs out, hang ups, where the, their biggest strengths and weaknesses, and, you know, you can hire somebody part time, you know, 10 hours a week at 10 bucks an hour. And, you know, that, that, that alone taking care of the stuff that you don't want to deal with or that you're not good at can just blow your business up. So cheap investment. And I, I think people don't, they're short sighted. They don't really see, um, you know, oh my God, I got to pay a hundred dollars a week to somebody or whatever the case is. And, um, that, that investment will just blow up their business if, if done correctly. Yeah. I, I would say, I'd say you should do the same, you know, search around if anybody, anybody, uh, you might find somebody, somebody listening right now. It's like, Hey, I'll write for you. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's gr great advice. Um, if you are looking at your 2019 going into 2020, where do you find yourself? spending more time than you have in the year past? Um, it's a good question. You know, the, the YouTube thing, all this is pretty new in the last few months. So we're, we're, we're pretty new on this. So I 
want to stay consistent with the two videos a week, but um, I've got at least a dozen courses and the courses, I don't know if the, the creation of the courses, the copyright and then the video process and then the editing, it's a lot. I mean, that, that, the short sale course is just over two and a half hours long. And um, I mean, I couldn't, I should probably document how many hours I got into it, but I, I want to lean more toward that. And obviously free courses as well that we're going to put out to help people. I think that's, that's important. And if they want to niche out. So um, I'd say probably at least two or three courses next year, and that's going to be a, a bear, but I, I got to get it done. I mean, I think there's people that need that info. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I've never even thought about, courses and the amount of time that they take but if you're providing a solid course where you're truly giving the value that it's worth you got to invest that time up front to make it into what it can become yeah no doubt about it like for example that short sale course if 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 anybody took that course and implemented exactly step by step what i taught in there there there's no doubt that they would start listing short sales even in today's market there's there's short sales and list pendants that happen every single day. Like I encourage everybody to go in their local MLS if they're a real estate agent or even the clerk of courts and, and check out list pendants. But um, I, I think the wave of the future, we're going to see more and more online courses. I'm not a huge fan of uh, kids taking on, you know, fifty, hundred thousand dollars worth of student debt to go to like Bucky, like for example, some of these kids that are in these courses and I talk to them, you know, they're, I talk to them on a local level and they're, they're in marketing courses and their professors teaching something that's been outdated a year ago. Mm -hmm. You know, it, what's the point? Um, I, you know, I think colleges for some professions like um, being a doctor or attorney, something like that, but man, there's, you know, if, if that person took, ten thousand dollars and invested it all into online courses as well as big events like you know even a tony robbins event i've been to one of his where you walk across the coals and everything that, that that'll change it it'll change your mindset you know mm -hmm. so i think the whole online courses um it, it's kind of you know it's here i don't think it's going anywhere and the more content creators like you and i anything that we've experienced that we can bring to the table and put out there is it's just going to help people that is sweet. I love it. Uh, Steve, if people want to learn more about, you know, what you're up to, where you're at, where can they go? Uh, the channel is called Steve Invests. Um, Steve, I-N-V-E-S-T-S. -E um, and then steveinvest.com is our, our site with free downloads. I can go there and, you know, I got a bunch of free PDFs. It's primarily geared, again, for real estate agents and real estate brokers. Um, but again, a financial component as well. So I think even just general public will be able to get a lot out of that kind of, that kind of content and videos for financial freedom. That is great. Well, thank you for reaching out via the YouTube comment. I wonder how you got down that rabbit hole of finding one of my videos. <laughs> Something <laughs> well, new. I'll, I'll tell you, it's, it's, um, it's all about, and yeah, I don't know how I came across your channel or what, but it's, when you see something that's good and clever, I think the first one was when you were doing the TikTok thing. I'm like, he's, he's got something going on, you know? But um, I think it's, it, it's important to see what other people are doing and then, you know, let them know if they're doing a good job and also if there's any value that you can add to it. And that's, that's ultimately how people are gonna find you and, and so forth is, is just giving back in that sense. Um, also for my viewers, you're a realtor in Minnesota. Yeah, right. Not just from Minnesota, Southeast Minnesota. Yep. Okay. And what we're doing is we're building up a big uh, referral plan as well. So we want to make sure that um, we get your contact information out there. So if what's your, what's your website for that? Yeah. So I'm just on my name, Bucky Beeman on all social platforms. I would say I'm most active on Instagram. I'm out there on Facebook, of course, YouTube and, uh, have a podcast at Bucky Beeman Audio Adventure, but uh, that's where I'm at, so reach out anytime. Beautiful, and I'll make sure we throw all the links down in, in our uh, YouTube feed too. Great, thank you, Steve, this was a blast. Appreciate your time, Bucky, see you, man, good luck. As always, guys, if you like this information, go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell notification, and uh, comment below if you'd like to see more about, uh, more conversations with Bucky and I as well, comment below, let us know what you're interested in talking about, whether it's more on the contract for deed like he was talking about 
or financial freedom or anything else that you need help on, comment below. Appreciate the support.